So as I mentioned before, we'll be talking about LEOP. LEOP is launch and early orbit phase. So it's all the process, all the management, all the campaign to be ready for launch, to launch the satellite and to commission the satellite. So we have to detumble the spacecraft, we have to, to verify all the subsystems, all the healthy checks. And in the case that I'm going to show to you, we'll be using actually two spacecraft, two twins, two 6U satellites, and we have a lot of maneuvers, even with propulsion, to get to the point where we are to, to start the nominal operations. Okay? So I'll stop this one. So, first of all, my original idea was to use the layup of GOMEX 2. Why GOMEX 2? Because GOMEX 2 was going to be launched, going to be deployed by the ISS, the same way as SOAR is going to. We couldn't do it because it failed at launch. It exploded. Which are twins, as I said, and they are both 6U satellites running in a constellation-like way. So the goal of this project was, among a lot of others, to validate an ISL. ISL is inter-satellite link in S-band. Okay? And here we can see both of them, the twin guys, and I'm going to explain to you what each one of them is, uh, is about. So GOMEX 4 e is a project developed in collaboration with the Danish Defense of Greenland. So Greenland is Danish territory. And there you have a lot of problem of access. Sometimes you have a ship, a vessel that, that has a problem. It takes a long time to, to get help or something like, like that. So in the GOMEX 4 a which is this first guy, we have two sets of payloads. We have ADSB and AIS. ADSB is for tracking of airplanes, and AIS is for tracking and management of vessels. Okay? Um, I don't have here a map, but we have some validations from other projects on the data we can, we can get around the globe. Okay? And then GOMEX-4B is actually an ESA project, and it has a series of different payloads. One of the first payload, the Nanospace. So Nanospace is our subsidiary in, in Uppsala. So it's, it was our first satellite where we put the propulsion in a CubeSat. Okay? So we had two, two sets of propulsion here on the bottom. Then we had our inter-satellite link using our SDR. Another one is a hyperspectral camera from HyperScout, from Cosine. These guys are from Italy. Then we have a star tracker from ISIS. And the last one, we have a board called Chimera from ESA. It's a COTS board, completely COTS, and they wanted to see how this COTS board behaves in a radiation. Okay. We'll be talking most about GOMEX-4 here because it's the most exciting one. Actually, since these two are twins and they are flying in this constellation formation, you can understand that the B is a guy with m many more payloads than, than the A. So we actually had to put some dummy masses on it, on the, on, on the for a So they have more or less the same weight, and then we can work better with the, with the drag management. Okay? So GOMEX 4B, as I showed to you, we have the GOMSpace SDR in S-band for inter-satellite link. We have the hyperspectral camera from Cosine. We have a star tracker from ISIS the Chimera board from ESA, and our first GOM space satellite using a propulsion system. And then here we have more or less the GOMEX-4 program. We had a kickoff in the project in the middle of 2015. Then we had March 2016 a PDR. In December same year, we had the CDR. Then we started the AIV. We completed the in integration in May last year. And then we started the environmental tests for both of them. Okay. The launch was a little delayed. We actually launched this year. And then after the launch, we started all the commissioning phase. Everything as, a, as I told you. So here are just some pictures. This one is the vibration pod. And then here, something curious. We have the CAD model showing all the systems of the spacecraft. So here. As I told you in the ADCS part, these are the reaction wheels that we use. This coil is the magnet torquer. Here we have a set of batteries. 
This guy is the P60, which is our EPS, our electrical uh, power management system. Then we have here our communication module, which is an onboard computer and a UHF transceiver. Then we have another model on top of it, which is again the same onboard computer and a GPS board from Novatel. This GPS board, we actually made it our product because it's very customized to our needs. Yeah. And then we have the payloads, the key meta board, we have the SDR here module. This big guy is the propulsion system from Nanospace. Then here in the middle of the interstage, we have a magnetometer. This big one is the cosine hyperspectral camera. We have a ground to satellite link patch antenna, which is an S-band as well. And finally, we have the ISIS star tracker. These ones are the UHF antennas, which of course, before deployment, they are attached to the body and with just a single burn wire, they are deployed after launch. Okay? And then we see the, the difference between a CAD model and a real model. So it's a little more complicated. And then we have here some pictures. So here we have Laura Leon Perez, who is uh, our systems engineer for GOMIX4. Pia Koch, who is the PM. And here is Michael Yu, who is our AIV engineer. And here is showing the, some integration in the pod of the Long March launcher. Okay. Then we have a flight sequence from the, the, the Long March. The most important things are these two here. So we have the first group of the secondary payload separation and the second group. As you can see here, in the first group, we have the GOMEX 4A. And in the second group, we have the GOMEX 4B. So, as you can imagine, they are not launched at the same time. They will have some delay between each other. And we will have to correct this delay in orbit. Okay. Just some more pictures. The Danish and the Chinese teams together. This is actually the the launch pod and here we have the flight sequence so we have all the communication with the satellite here the GOMEX 4A and the B and we had the first contact in February this year the satellite was responsive the detumbling phase became active we deployed successfully the UHF antenna and the GPS work in a, in a nominal way and here was just our operations room in GOM space here shows all the phases for GOMEX 4B and GOMEX 4A, all the sequence of actions that we have to take in this commissioning phase. Okay, so we can make it bigger. So of course, phase one, we have the launch, we have the first connection, the UHF antenna, the detumbling verification, of course. So that's when we activate our magnet torque. Then we have for around two weeks, we start seeing the health of all our subsystems. So here are our P60. Then we have the onboard computer, the UHF link commissioning, all the ADCS. And then for three weeks, we have this long time test where we're testing each of the modules in a more detailed way. Okay. And then phase four is for the payloads. Of course, we'll take a look at the first health check but then later it goes for the payload owners most of the times. Right. Here we have just a very short introduction on the ground station commissioning. So for the GOMEX-4, we actually had an S-band link performance a little better due to some very conservative budget calculations that we did. Then we'll pass through each of the subsystems, right? So here is our UHF uh, radio the nominal behavior as expected. This interface we call GS Web. It's an interface that we developed at GOM Space and you access it through the browser. Okay? And this is where you get all the information that you need from a given module. So you can get all the temperatures, all the current you want to monitor. Okay? Then we go to the OBC. Here's some data as well. Probably you won't be able to see what it is which. I tried making it a little bigger. Then we go to our EPS. It was the first time that we put 
this new EPS called P60 in orbit. The battery voltage stable, the charge dis discharging responding properly. And we have in the P60, of course, electrode protection systems. And it was verified, of course. This guy is a PowerPoint track activation. So it's an algorithm for your system to use your power in, in its maximum. And then we actually had a little problem there. We had a, a non-conformance detected. The reason for that is that the plus Y phase was wrongly connected for the solar cells. They were all connected in series. Okay. I wanted to show this for you to know how do we usually mitigate it once it's in orbit. So we had here, for example, input power lost from 10 to 20 percent. But then we had to make new budget analysis and controls and the voltage charge, it was reduced, so we kept the safety limits. And in the end, we had no risk for the operations. Okay. Then we can see external temperatures. It's a little messy here because we're taking all the outputs at the same time. So we can go from minus 42 plus 85, that's the temperatures where we qualify our subsystems. And here you can see the minimum and maximum temperatures in each of the phases of the cube set. Then we go to internal temperatures. We again show here the limits where each of the subsystems can work at and what we measured in orbit. Okay. And all subsystems are within their, their ranges. Then we go to ADCS, of course. So first thing, we have to deploy the UHF antenna, and then we'll start the detumbling phase. As I told you, we create a local magnetic field. It will try to align with Earth's magnetic field and it will stop this chaotic movement. And then you do this uh, three-axis pointing to see how your spacecraft is working with the reaction wheels. And then we have the main achievements of the ADCS. So, the satellite was successfully detumbled after launch. We had a performance assessment with uh, on-ground calibration. And then we did the in-orbit calibration, of course. Of course, we had to check the pointing accuracy. All the ADCS mission modes were tested and commissioned. And then we have the drag management between GOMEX-4 A and B that I'm going to show to you very shortly. And then checking the health of the propulsion model as well. Then we go to the two satellites, GOMEX 4A and B. As you saw from the flight sequence from the Long March satellite, they were not launched in the same groups. So they are actually launched with a distance in altitude of 320 meters. What we wanted to, to do, we want them to stay actually on the same altitude. But we want them to have a higher distance between each other. Okay? So how do we do this? We do this with drag management. So we put in this ramp position with minimum drag, so minimum cross-section, and the other one we put with a higher cross-section, of course. What happened is that if we didn't have propulsion, we would take two to three months to equal the altitude of, of the satellite. So we needed propulsion, of course. And here it is showing the GOMEX-4 A and the GOMEX-4 B, the altitude of each of them. So, we want to reduce the separation between them. Now, we are talking between two things. One is the altitude difference, and the other is the separation between them. Okay. This was the maneuver plan. So, some burns for 640 seconds for GOMEX-4B to reach GOMEX-4A, and they were two separated in, in distance, so they needed to come a little uh, shorter. So, we validate the inter-satellite link. Right. Here we can see the GOMEX-4B actually going closer to the GOMEX-4A after the propulsion. And here showing the, the four burns that we did with the peak current consumptions. Okay. And of course here is showing more details in the total impulse and the thrust that was used in each of the thrusters. And then here we have the separation distance between them. As you can see, the distance got much higher, and then we tried pulling it back after the, the propulsion. 
So it was around 1,000 kilometers after 18 days, we consumed 4.27 grams of propulsion and the results itself became practically the same as we planned. Right? We just consumed a little bit, bit more of fuel. Then we come for the payloads commissioning. After launch, we have the determining phase. Then we have all the platform subsystems where we check the health. After we come back with the ADCS to the proper orbit where we, we are, then we start taking a look at how the payloads are in terms of, of health. So here we were checking the S-band for ISL and HSL. So ISL is the inter-satellite link and HSL is the link with Earth. And we had the expected behavior as we expected. We have the Chimera board from ESA. It was commissioned in 10th of February. And then we already had some latch ups de detected. These are, of course, under investigation by ESA. We are not the ones investigating it. Then we had the star tracker from ISIS, so we check the health. Then we have some telemetry monitoring, and then we will start capturing images of stars. That's the main goal. So we have here the step one successfully performed, 14th of March. The step two, we had a soft bug. It was successfully repeated after. And in the end, we had images generated with 128 kilobytes. Okay. Cosine, Hyperscout, the, there we have an image of uh, Laura int integrated camera. And the same, we have a health check, and in the end we had a second image above Cuba. And of course, image panning of downloading and analysis, this goes to Cosine. So we pass through practically all the subsystems, so the power, the onboard computer, the UHF radio, the ADCS module, the propulsion payload, then we have all the other payloads here. You can see the difference until here we have this check because all of these guys, they are performed solely by GOM space. But when it comes to performance, we leave it to the payload owners. We come to requirements verification. We have the UHF telemetry and telecommands requirements where we checked. High speed links, so S-band. We're showing here the in-orbit results. Then ADCS requirements, ADCS shall be able to measure satellite's position to within 30 meters. We're here just showing the in-orbit results, absolute knowledge errors, absolute pointing errors, relative pointing errors, and uh, determined phases as well. Okay. Then we have the propulsion requirements. I'm not sure if I should pass through all of them, but of course we had to check all of them in orbit. Then we have the inter-satellite link requirements again. Then we come to all the payload requirements. The star tracker. And then next one will be the hyperscale payload requirements. And next picture you can actually see some CAD models. So here's our nanospace propulsion module. This is the ESA Chimera board. This is the ISIS star tracker. And here we have the cosine hyperspectral camera. This is a little more understandable, like a Gantt chart. So we have the LEO and commissioning here. We have the platform commissioning after the launch. Then we go to propulsion, inter-satellite link. Then we go to each of the payloads. This ADSB is from the gomex 4 a Phase one, which is the ADCS or AOCS ISL, where we check all the systems and, and performance. Then we go for the secondary payloads, this 2,000 kilometers is the distance between the satellites, not the altitude. We do another check with the ADCS, and then we have further nominal operations. In orbit demonstration mission, this was practically the mission itself to validate some of our concepts and some instruments. If anyone has any questions,